I'm down at everything. Mm. Now the red red thing that says live means we're live. Although there's no comments, it still means we're on. Well, hello everyone. Look at that. It is six o'clock, and I am right on time. I was like thirty minutes late to this afternoon session. I felt bad. I got tied up with two things going on up up at the office, but uh, we still did our, our hour session. But I was definitely late getting here, so it was my fault. So I apologize uh, if anyone was looking at at the afternoon session. So. Six o'clock, and I believe it or not, I was down here like thirty minutes early. Just getting, just getting situated and everything, so we're good to go. So I would like somebody out there in Never Neverland to text, not text, comment, comment. Terminology matters. To please comment. Oh, look at there, Cameron. Good evening, Chief. Loud and clear. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate you. Thanks for. It was good to see you this afternoon, and and I hope you're studied up for tomorrow, man. It's going to be a good day. I'm excited. Um, uh, Cameron is a young adult police commissioner. Ms. Dance, good to have you on board. Thank you, thank you. Cameron is a high school student, young adult police commissioner. Tomorrow at 10 a.m., 20 new police recruits will walk across the straight stage and graduate uh, uh, to be to graduate the academy. Right, 20 young individuals, uh, and one of our guest speakers. Get this. One of our guest speakers is a high school student. That I, I'm excited. It's going to be a good day tomorrow. I, I am excited about that. So you, everyone's invited. We'll be at Temple uh, Temple Baptist Church on uh, Harpersville Road at 10 o'clock. Um, we got people coming from across the country, and there's going to be some surprises tomorrow. I can't give them away. I want to, man. I'm excited. I can't give them away. But, um, yeah, graduation tomorrow at 10 o'clock is going to be the – is going to be a really nice event, uh, and it means a lot. I could not be happier for those uh, individuals that are that are graduating. We're going to go through um, there's a couple of things I wanted to hit on, but really I just wanted to have some questions back and forth with you guys. So let me just say hello to some people. Sean, thank you for being here. Keith, my friend from up in Richmond, I hope all is well. Greg, Chief Drew, where is the Mountain Dew? Greg, it's always right next to me, my friend. It's always right next to me, and especially at six o'clock, I got to keep going. Not a big coffee guy, not drinking the cappuccino, but the Diet Mountain Dew will get you through. The Diet Mountain Dew will get you through. I might have to coin that. Uh, my friends, that's uh, always teasing me. That's good. Miss Cox, thank you for being here. Uh, Cameron, let me tell you something, buddy. Let me just say, I just where your speech says you can't let me down. Let me tell you this. You couldn't let me down. I am so impressed with you and the stuff that you're doing at your age and the, how engaged you are and what's going on and wanting to know more about law enforcement in the department. Um, you, you couldn't let me down if you tried. You just being at graduation means a lot to me. I, I appreciate you. Uh, Nikki, okay, what if our tags are out? Wait a minute. What if our tags, give me just a second, Nikki. I got to make sure I got you on the screen. What What if our tags are out date? But, I'm sorry. People keep going. So, let me tell you something. I got some helpers tonight, some assistants. They're messing with me. What if our tags are out of date but can't get an appointment from DMV until the end of October? So, Nikki, it's not a problem. If you get stopped, whether it's here or somewhere else, or somewhere else, if you get stopped because the tags are expired, simply tell them that. We know that. We're very aware of that. We know DMV is backlogged. I have some officers who are trying to get driver's license renewed. So um, I can't say that you won't get stopped so, because we don't know that, right? No crystal ball. But um, just just explain that to the, the officer. I can tell you here in Newport News, you're going to be fine. All right, I mean, we're not trying to give tickets, just to give tickets. So um, it may they may stop you and ask and just explain that to them that they have an appointment. I can't get one until then, and, and you'll be fine here. Um, Keith, will there be video for the? Yes, Keith, we are going to view a live live stream. Learning the technical term, live stream the graduation. It, I'm telling you, it is going to be a great event. I've got two or three surprises, uh, and man, it's going to be good. So, Greg. I hope you tune in as well, my friend, up 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 there in Richmond. You 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 can check out our graduation here. It'll be a lot of things that you and I have talked about over the years, Greg. Uh, but it'll be it'll be really good. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to the, uh, Greg. We got Richard. Thank you for being here, my friend. I appreciate you. Uh, uh, fine young. Uh, fi fine young people, and that, let me tell you, there are twenty young individuals. 
It is a good mix of male and female. And that's one of the issues we really wanted to do more of here is to get more females in the department and more females into uh, leadership roles. Uh, it is a good diverse class, uh, individuals that speak Spanish. We have a mandate here that a, a percentage of the individuals who join our department have to speak Spanish coming in the door. Nothing against Rosetta Stone, but I need people who can communicate. And I've got a segment of this community that I need to be able to talk with, right? That we need to be able to interact with. So I am excited about this class. They are a good class. It's going to be a, a really, really good group. And um, man, I, I, I'll tell you, and, and get this, right behind this class, November 24th, we're going to graduate another 21 individuals. We're already starting to hire for our class in September. And then the class after that will start in December. So we've got to continue, continue to bring people in. We want to make sure we're recruiting the right way, bringing in good officers. Um, but I'm, I'm excited. So they are, they are, I got to meet their parents last night and talk with them. Uh, man, and we talk about what kind of officers are you trying to bring in? People who care about community, care about other people, um, think outside the box or creative, but have a passion for community, have a passion for youth, have a passion for, for, for individuals. And I told their parents last night, I can't teach them that. I can teach them how to drive the car, how to use all the equipment we have. I can teach them how to do reports. I can teach them what the law is, but I can't teach them to care about people. You know where they get that from? Their parents, the way they were they're brought, they're bro are, are raised up, their brothers and sisters, um, mentors, pastors, baseball, football, basketball coaches, those who invested in them. I need them to come there with that, come here with that. I can teach them everything else. But what I'm looking for is people who have compassion for other people. Remember that word, compassion. How about this? I want this department to be known for the police department that has the most compassion on the East Coast. The police department that, that, that has compassion in the way we handle and address situations in our community. And I got to spend a lot of time with those, with those young, young recruits. And let me tell you, the city should be proud. It is a great bunch of individuals. Uh, Sierra, how do we get to the live stream of tomorrow's graduation? That, so, Sarah? They can go to our Facebook page, just like you found this live stream today. So she's saying, right, since I'm about the worst person to do technical, I'm not allowed to touch anything, right? If I start to, like, chief, did you go on our Facebook page? That It'll be live streamed from there. We're also going to record it, but I'm telling you, you want to watch it live. Because there's going to be some good stuff happening tomorrow. I want to, I want to share it with you guys right now, but I can't. I'm excited. Um, let me just say this. No, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Um, you can you go into our Facebook page tomorrow. Uh, it starts at 10 o'clock. You can look on a little bit early. Um, you'll see some. You're gonna see some really good things. Uh, you're gonna hear some good stories, and uh, I, I want that day to be special. Individuals who join police departments will always remember the day they graduate when they walk across that stage. I'm gonna put my hand in their hand. I'm gonna have a few words with them, just me and them, just for a moment. Their family comes up and pins their badge on them. Fathers pinning their badge on their son, husbands with wives, wives with husbands, um, their kids. And I like to interact with the kids a little bit, so it's going to be a good event. But, uh, yeah, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, Angel, congratulations to the graduates. <laughs> Angel, you think so? I, I, I don't know. I don't know if many people would agree with you. Um, must be my hairstyle. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> uh, congrats. That, that's great. Robin, thank you so much. Yes, 20 graduates. Uh, outstanding group, and there's another 21 right behind them. It's going to be great. Wait, scroll back up. I got to say hello to somebody. Right after Miss Horvath, how are you? Um, listen, I owe you an apology. I could not make your graduation. I saw all kinds of pictures, but I cannot be more happy for you in, in graduating. I know you did a little bit early, uh, and I am I am so impressed. I am so impressed and proud of you. You have a, a bright future. And I want you to know if there's anything, anything at all that I can ever do for you, this department, you're still part of our family. Anything I can do for you, please let me know. Uh, Greg, all right, my friend. Greg, I'm going to be looking on and see if you chimed in. So I'm just letting you know. I'll be, I'll be tracking you down. Vicki, thank you so much. Nikki, I got new toys to donate for domestic violence families. Where can I? Vicki, you want, if you, or Nick, Vicki, Nikki, if you want to bring it by police headquarters, Maybe one day next week, just give us a heads up and we'll have people out there to receive them. That's great. We put them in officers' cars and, and the things that we have here. So, man, that, that's going to be fantastic. I really appreciate you doing that. That means a lot. That, wow, that's really cool. 
you got the best out there. And thank you. That's great. Thank you so much. Thank you, you cause I didn't want to drive without knowing. Nope, that's no problem. And look, yeah, yeah, like I said, you may get stopped, but just tell, explain to the officers, and we totally get it. No worries. Is it possible to get a waiver to join the force with a dismiss, dismissed felony? Um, gosh, that's a good question. You know what? I don't want to say yes or no, uh, but I'll tell you this. I'll be glad. To, let's have a conversation. Let's see what it is. If it's, um, you know, if it's violent, uh, that's going to cause us some issues. If it's uh, if you shoplifted three times, it becomes a fail. so. Let's just let's let's have a conversation offline about about what it is. Uh, I'd you know I'd work with our Commonwealth attorney see how they felt as well. But let's let's talk. Um, uh, Chris, you've probably seen the Facebook videos of those Texas guys who like to press the rights not to identify themselves when stopped by suspicious activity. What happens in New Ford News? If I'm taking a video on public property and an officer insists on seeing my ID, what happens when I refuse to show my ID? Uh, so, Chris, I'm not really sure. You know, if you're if you're just taking a video, I, I don't know what the problem would be. Um, if their officers are in the middle of doing something and you come up and you're right on top of them and interfering, or they have to keep an eye on you and while they're trying to do that, could cause some problems or concerns. But um, yeah, I, I, why would we ask who you are if you're just shooting a video? So I need a little bit more about it. Um, and I have to apologize. I'm not, maybe I'm not exactly sure, uh, with those guys in Texas, I'll have to take a look, but I'm not, I'm not exactly sure about, as long as you're not interfering, there, there, there are no issues. Now, some people, uh, the officers are in a struggle or they're interviewing someone or talking to a witness or a victim and the individual comes up right up on them and tries to record that. We can't have that. I have to protect the people that, that, we're, that we're addressing. So but as long as you're not interfering, I don't, I don't know what the issue would be. But I'll look up the stuff going on in Texas and see what I can find out. Nikki, congratulations. Well, Nikki, thank you very much. That's great. Oh, so somebody has a fiancé tomorrow. Well, I will tell you what. It, will be a, it is going to be a great event, and I am so glad you're there to support uh, your fiancé, and I look forward to it. Um, I think we missed a couple. Good, good, Maria. Good evening. I hope you all are doing well. It's good to have you here tonight, Keith. You're not allowed. You're not allowed to touch stuff because you unplug stuff, Keith. I'm telling you, I don't touch anything, man. I don't unplug nothing. I don't mess with nothing. Look, the screen. They they like Chief. It's not touch screen. Get off of it. So I just I just sit. They tell me where to sit. We're, I'm looking into this like round ball. It's got like a blue eye, like dark or not dark, uh, uh, R2D2, and I talk into that. It's very awkward for me, but it blows me away how many people can look at this and, and send in information and read it at different times. And and you know it's with with COVID and and all the different things in life that go on. It makes it so much easier, I guess, to 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 sit and, and interact. And and the more people that I can interact with and, and field questions and talk with, I think it's better. So. They sold me. I was wrong. I didn't think many people would be interested in doing something on 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 screen as opposed to in person. But um, yeah, I uh, it, it works well, and uh, I appreciate. I just really enjoy being able to talk to our community. It means a lot to me. So yeah, uh, uh, Debbie, hi, Chief. Debbie. Thank you so much. I am. I'm doing well. I'm excited about tomorrow. I'm always excited when individuals join this department. Um, when people get uh, graduate the academy and they get promoted, those are just some of the best times in the at least for me as a chief, and uh, that's our future, right? When we talk about re reform or reimagining, um, Greg, Greg, uh, and uh, my friend um, in Richmond, you know, as we as we, we look at, at policing uh, uh, profession, uh, we talk about reform and, and reimagining policies and all those things, procedures. The best thing with reform, I believe, is is new people joining the department, uh, new young people that are going to be the future. Ten years from now, they are going to be what we're talking about, right? So I, I, it's just a it's just a good feeling. Alex, how are you, my friend? Good to have you here. Newport News is about to. Nope, we got to scroll down. Yep, yep, Newport News, Greg. Newport News is about to embark on some creative work with youth and gang violence, also with tracking gun. Absolutely. Um, not only through technology, but uh, contracting out and getting in, getting a uh, a research firm to come in and look at that. The stuff that we're doing 
uh, with our federal partners. Yeah, it's all about new and in innovative ways to address crime and reduce crime. Technology and investigations are going to play a big role in that. And Greg, I want to appreciate, I really want to tell you thank you for your leadership and some of the stuff that we're doing together. I appreciate that. Uh, Brandy, hope to see you at court. So Brandy, I will tell you there's about 72 community days Saturday in the city of Newport News. Maybe not quite that many, but there's a lot. I know we will be there. Uh, I will do my best, but there are a lot of lot of different events I want to try to stop by at. Uh, I think we did three three last Saturday. Uh, we had a community day in Marshall Courts. It was great. Man, kids came out, hamburgers, hot dogs, popsicles, uh, dancing. We had a DJ. We were playing basketball. We were doing the hula hoop thing. We had all different city resources there, the fire department, puppet shows. Um, but just see the kids come out. I left there, stopped by another community event. I got to go then uh, down to Lincoln, uh, King Lincoln Park, uh, and visit my friends who were having a, a, a autism awareness. Just phenomenal, phenomenal people. I learned so much about autism and different things and how different people are on on the uh, on the spectrum. And and just we talked about Project Guardian. It's just man, it was just it was really good. It was really good. So I'll do my best. But I, there is a lot of events. I know we will be there. Uh, my friend, um, Principal Kelly uh, uh, Stewart, phenomenal work up at Jenkins Elementary School. She's going to be out there, and I'm I'm really really excited. Oh wait, wait 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 a minute. Is that Miss Kelly Stewart right there already chiming in? I look, did you know I was going? Your ears must be burning. Um, but she's such a Kelly's such a great partner. She's done so much in the community. I, I have never met a principal who cares more about their people. Uh, more about their students. Um, she is just engaged, and I've never seen her have a bad day. Now, maybe maybe she has, but she's always smiling and cutting up, and it's just it's a joy to be around. And what she told me about the courthouse green, we're in, and uh, we look forward to seeing you out there. Uh, Keith, these live chats are awesome. You are so approachable and easy to speak, even to someone not in Newport News. I wish more cheese. You know what, Keith? I'm going to skip right over that, and we're going to scroll right down. I will have you a Mountain Dew. Brand, Brandy, that's what I'm talking about because I'll, I'll tell you, I have, it'd be hard to go through a Saturday in the hot weather without one. So I got to be able to get through the day. <laughs> Am I like all caught up? Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. So a couple of things that I wanted to share with the with you all about some things that are going on. We talked about graduation. I always want to make sure that we touch base on crime when I talk to people. What's the crime like in, in the city? And perception, man, perception is reality, but it's not its not always fact. Uh, some, sometimes I'll interact with groups and ask, you know, what do you think the crime is in the city? Oh, it's through the roof, Chief Lee. A uh, hundred of that. I mean, no, 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 no. Listen, right now today, every, every department in the United States reports crime numbers to the FBI. They take those numbers. They take the violent crime, right, or, or robberies or homicides or aggravated assaults, shootings, stabbings, what. And they take our property crime, our thefts, our larcenies, um, shoplifting, homes broken into, uh, uh, auto theft, all those things. And they crunch that together, and that gets our total crime. And that's what gets reported to the FBI. And they take that, and they look at crime per population, right? So every department does that. Right now, the city, if I was to report on numbers to the FBI today, we do it at the end of the year. But if I was to do it today, the city is down 7.5% crime. We have a 7% reduction in crime this year compared to last year. Last year we were down 9%. That 9% was compared, last year we were down 11%. That 11% was compared to the 9% we were down the year before, and that was compared to the 5% we were down. So this is how the, the crime is going in the city of Newport News over the last three and a half years. Now, there are some categories in all those crimes combined that we're seeing an increase. We've had an increase in our homicides this year, although our clearance rates are well over 75%. And we're seeing an increase in our robberies. We're up about 13 compared to where we were last year. And I've seen that bump go up really over the last two months. Started to level out a little bit. We have the same number of shootings this year that we had last year. Uh, so as we get through the summer, uh, it'll be interesting to see if school starts back and, and how we go. So I'm really looking at uh, where we're at this summer. We kind of leveled out on some things. We still have some spikes in some neighborhoods. Uh, there's, th there's three neighborhoods that we focused on, maybe four that we focused on, that we wanted to work with all year long, um, with enforcement, with traffic enforcement, with community, with outreach, working with youth. Uh, and those neighborhoods look really, really good. Marshall Courts, Beachmont, 
Um, Courthouse Green is a huge success for us. Uh, South Morris and Tristan, Dresden Lane, Randolph neighborhood. Those are areas that we've been focusing on since January 1. We'll continue through December 31st. We want to have an impact in some of those neighborhoods. So uh, we, we look at crime and, and measure just about everything, not only our, our outreach, uh, uh, events that we interact with community on, but also our overtime on our, on our manpower, our strength. Um, on individuals, recruits that are coming in, making sure that we have a diverse organization. So all those things that, you know, learned from Chief Monroe years ago, if you can't measure it, it is extremely difficult to manage it. So all those things play a, a role in what we look at as we try to con continually to improve. So we talked about crime, we talked about graduation. I want to touch on back to school. School starts just in a couple of weeks. Some schools have already started, but remember that we're going to have our young people, especially our elementary kids, getting on and off those school buses. I just want to caution everyone, please, please, please uh, be careful. Remember um, the school bus, right? All the school buses now have cameras, so if a bus stops and kids are getting on, that arm comes out, you've got to stop. So when there's a median, if you're coming the opposite direction, so if you're traveling south and the school bus is traveling north and stops and there's a median in the roadway, north, uh, southbound traffic can keep moving. But if there's no median, then southbound or whatever traffic and direction has to also stop. So the median is kind of the indicator. Do I stop or not? If you're on the same side as the bus, we're always stopping, right? Till that can't till that arm closes and the bus starts to move. And it's about safety. It's not about writing traffic tickets or creating revenue. I will tell you those tickets are expensive. It's about two hundred and fifty dollars. But it's not about writing more tickets. It's not about increasing revenue. It's about making sure that our kids are safe and taking it seriously. So just please just use just use caution about that. Uh, let me catch up a little bit. Um, Miss Washington, thank you for all you do, Chief. You made my sister's uh, uh, doc Mary day after she five. Oh my gosh, yeah. So I got to inter I got to interact with her, eighty year old young lady. Uh, she told me she had just done a five k. So one, I was I was like wow. I'm like embarrassed as I stand there and eat a gummy bear and drink a Diet Mountain Dew, and she's got this 5K necklace charm around her. I was like, oh, my gosh. But, yeah, she was, it was so cool talking to her. And then I got to go over and talk to one of, my, one of her friends uh, that was in the car that wasn't able to. I think she just had some knee surgery. Uh, and I got to go over and talk to her. She couldn't get out of the car, and, and she shouldn't with it, right? But I got to go talk to her a little bit, and uh, I think I even talked to one of her friends. So it was, it was, it was just really, really cool. Um, unfortunately, I've been admitted to the hospital in CCU. Well, please keep me posted. We'll be praying for you. Um, just take one day at a time. Just breathe, and everything's going to be okay. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you, uh, it was great uh, to interact with them on Saturday. But uh, Miss Washington, you take care of yourself. Please be safe. Don't do too much. Just take one day at a time, and we'll be praying for you here in the police department, okay? It was good to talk to you tonight. Um, go Miss Murray. <laughs> there you go. Uh, slow down for those flashing school bus. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, thanks, Keith. It, it, yeah, it's just it's just really about safety. I just want to make sure that, um, God forbid, we don't have any any accidents. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. Uh, and that that's that's what that speed enforcement is for, and and the, the school bus safety and those things. A couple of things. Our domestic violence team is still working really well. Uh, get this, domestic violence, two advocates here, Cheryl and Nisha, uh, they got a request to go talk to this group. And uh, I figured it was maybe 20 or 30 people who want to talk about domestic violence. It was 100 plus soldiers up at Fort Houston. So they went up and did a presentation to, talked about domestic violence, signs of domestic violence, how to avoid it, how to cope, how to calm things back down, what domestic violence is, and many different ways it, it looks. Uh, they're just phenomenal. Uh, the way that they have worked with our department, worked with other uh, city agencies, worked for entities outside. And there's a group coming here to do about a three-month documentary on the stuff that they're doing in law enforcement and how they're changing what we do. I mean, those, those two ladies are just completely phenomenal, and uh, they, they have just been amazing. So um, the domestic violence stuff is working really, really well. We started our uh, – we've hired our two social workers that work inside the department, right, uh, human services train them. We have hired them. We're paying them. Um, but I need people here, right, that I can get to a scene. And a lot of stuff happens after 5 o'clock. So we call and wake somebody up on call. Now we have entities inside the, inside the police department 
They work evening hours from like six to one, two in the morning. Um, one, one of them came out and, and helped the situation where there was a DUI and we had to make an arrest. It was like a two year old in the back seat. And what would have taken a couple hours to get placement, we had that done in about 45 minutes. And that matters. That's reimagining, right? That, that matters. And, and, and not, to, not to mention our partnership with the uh, CSB board and, and, and the fire department, how we address mental illness. We have officers at the hospital now. We have our CARES van that responds to low uh, priority calls dealing with mental illness. Now, if, if we, we still respond together with them, but we kind of take the second responder role. We'll stay in the parking lot or the driveway. And as long as there's no nothing violent, we, uh, they handle it. And a lot of the mental calls that we go on deal with over-medicated, under-medicated, haven't taken their medication, depression, uh, suicidal, loneliness, homelessness, um, uh, mental illness, people that can't communicate, have some of those challenges. So to have, have those individuals out there, man, it is just great. And I, I think that like the first day they took like, the first week I should say, were like 30 calls. It's just amazing. And, and I think that program is just gonna build. So we talk about social workers working in a police department, domestic violence, working in a police department, mental, uh, mental illness uh, responses, how we change. The state's trying to figure out the best way for departments to do it across the board. There's only two in the state right now that's got a program, and we're one of them, right? And I'm not saying we're better than any other department. I've never compared us to any other department. I'm just saying that we're trying to get ahead of it, right, to address it. And, and some people in the state are looking at what we're doing, and, and uh, I'm sure we're going to have bumps along, the, along, and we can learn so much from other agencies and cities, people that aren't in law enforcement. Uh, but we're trying. We're trying to, to how do we do better? Uh, so that's kind of the things that we're looking at here in Newport News. I just wanted to share with you all those things are up and running and really, really doing well. Uh, Cameron, are the speed trailers dispersed around the city? Cameron, we get a, a, one of the biggest complaints I'm getting now. That's a great question. One of the biggest complaints I'm getting right now is speed. Um, so uh, one of the things we did to force multiply, we did buy speed trailers, one for each precinct, and we can move that around every couple of days to uh, areas that just for awareness, right? It doesn't, it doesn't issue a ticket, but it does show awareness. Now, I will, I will say that where they are located, there are usually a, there's usually a police officer close around. Um, but yes, we do have them, and they are dispersed in three different areas of the city, and that may be something we expand on if we need to be. Uh, but speed has been a, a, a complaint that I've seen to get more and more, and it's not just in one area of the city. It's in different, different areas, the north, central, and south. So... That is something that we're looking at. We've had to shut down our traffic division for a little bit to help us with some manpower issues until we get to, and that's why everybody's so excited about this class coming out. Um, so we'll get back on it full force, but we are using our speed trailers in, uh, in different locations throughout the city. Uh, Teresa, how can I contact Chief? I have an issue in the neighborhood that I would like to discuss with you, thanks. Teresa, um, if, if you call the police department and ask to speak to me, they'll put you in touch with my assistant. Or if you can, I don't want to say it, but I, I think there's a way you can send a message through here that we would see. I don't know. So if she reaches out to us, we can get her information, like through a private message. Um, so I'm hearing. Just DM us. A yes. private message? Yes. What's it called? DM us? DM. DM direct message, direct message. Yeah, see, they got to work with me. I don't know, uh, but direct message, and uh, I can shoot you a call back, or we can reach to you uh, back through uh, social media, whatever is best for you. But um, yeah, uh, um, absolutely, love to talk to you. Whatever the issue is, we'll, we'll talk it through. Evelyn, uh, any plans for a new station in Denby or Old Kmart parking lot? So, Evelyn, from what I understand, as the Ferguson group moves out. Uh, into their brand new building over at City Center, that that is the lot, that is the area where the new North Precinct will be. So we're looking forward for that. Um, I think they call that Sherwood, if I'm not mistaken, that Sherwood area, that that's where the new North Precinct will be. So um, I would kind of uh, envision a, a precinct about the shape and size of, of our South Precinct. Uh, but I'll tell you, you know, some forward thinking, right? Top secret stuff. Maybe we put some other offices in there that could assist the community as well on the north end of the city. Um, and what that might be, I don't, I don't know. I know that there's some departments that have some city agencies in their, in their uh, police headquarters, uh, whether it's dealing with, um, gosh, I don't even want to go down that, but, but, different, but different city functions that might be beneficial to people in the north 
part of the city that may not have to drive all the way to the south. I know the city managers and I have talked, and, and uh, I'm open. I'm, I'm open that I think it's great to have partnerships with other entities. So, but that is the area that, that it will be, not on the Kmart lot, it's uh, across the street on the where the Ferguson uh, buildings is uh, in the Sherwood area. John Laff, John Laff, John Laff. Thanks, Chief, for admitting your pilot program establishing environmental officer. I'm already seeing positive results and definitely making a huge difference. Really appreciate that. John, thank you, my friend. I know we've talked a lot about one of the issues when we talk about crime is, you know, it's not just about making arrests. One of the issues we address is blight. Uh, remember in the 80s, right, the blo broken window theory in communities or neighborhoods, if we allow things to go and develop, and it just kind of snowballs from there. So one of the issues we're doing right now is a pilot program. We took an officer. Uh, my past agency, we had this program, and, and we took an officer, and we focused him or her directly on blight. Uh, lighting, uh, cars that have no wheels on it that are broken down on the roadway, dumpsters that are overthrowing with trash, uh, people that uh, throw out furniture and it's in the middle of the street, mattresses who get wet get wet, and then it gets torn up, and then it attracts um, food and trash that might attract mice and then other rodents and stuff like that, and disease. Um, trying to move on that, not let it sit for two weeks. Make a call, we see it, we make a call, and we get that stuff picked up in 24, 48 hours. And I, th I think that's important. I think it shows the community that we care um, because I think when we don't address that stuff in a timely manner, that it shows the community or they start to feel the perception that they don't matter. And I don't, I don't want that. So we're really par partnering with um, works and utilities. We're partnering with uh, our, our uh, code enforcement to address those issues. And uh, I, I think we're piloting it right now in the South Precinct and then we'll see if it's something we implement full time. But I'm, I, I think it's been very, very effective. Um, I, I know the officer we're using, Officer Grayhouse, is, is really uh, working with citizens. I want citizens to take back their neighborhoods. I want to organize some community cleanups for officers. And I know our young adult police commissioners, high school students, right, have worked with officers in picking up trash around the around the water and the southeast community. I just, I just think that's great. Um, and I think it does make a difference. Um, how things look matter. So, uh, John, I really appreciate your partnership in working with Officer Grayhouse doing those things. All right, uh, Chief Drew, thank you for your commitment to our youth. This is I, I wait, Levi's mom. By the way, last week we dropped off uh, first year of college to New Orleans. Whoa, New Orleans. Oh my gosh. Um, that, let me tell you, I, I cannot be more proud of her, New Orleans. Are you kidding me? So you better be sending some photographs and some pictures. That is great. Man, that is so awesome. Um, wow. Gosh, where did the time go, you know? that That's amazing. Please tell her that I said hello. I wish her the best and let her know that I'm thinking of her. That's great. Uh, go back up above Cameron. That was... That. You sure? Yeah. You answered. Yep, yeah. okay. Can a police officer use the speed... Wait, use the speed that is indicated on the speed trailer to pull someone over. So uh, yes, we would. We, that could be a reason for a traffic stop. We also have uh, radar sets in our vehicles, and we also have something called the pace method. So if an officer is doing uh, 50 miles an hour, 45 miles an hour, and someone passes them, uh, then you can pace a little bit to see. But yes, if someone blew past that speed trailer, speed trailer set for 35, we see 60 or 70, uh, we could use that. Um, it may not mean there would be a ticket, uh, a lot of that depends on the, the behavior of the driver. Um, sometimes people are in a hurry and just forget where they're at or they didn't see the speed change. Um, but if you know, if you get a uh, make a traffic stop, if you pulled me over, Cameron, and I'm like, you know, don't you have something better to do? Look, I got stuff to do. I ain't really worried about the speed. If I show no concern for community, society, the rules, that person's probably, I'm, you're probably going to stroke me a ticket. If you approach me and, you know, officer, I'm sorry I was late for work. I, 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 I completely, I didn't, I didn't see the speed. I know better than that. I apologize. You know, that's something we can work with. Please drive safe, slow down. And, you know, I, I did two traffic stops this week on the way to, on the way coming in, just people flying down Jefferson Avenue. And both were like, Chief, we didn't even see the speed. And you know what? You don't always have to have a ticket. It's really just about safety and slowing people down, just being aware. So, um, yes, and, and there's a lot of things that can play into that. One of the things being done in Henrico courts is we have a general district court judge working with Virginia Supreme Court to create a mental health only docket in court to get those. Keith, I'll tell you, familiar with that. We have that in Richmond. We also have that in Newport News. Uh, the judges are very good with that. Judge Hoffman is a big proponent. So is our city manager, our mayor, 
and our city council are big proponents of mental health docket. We have that here and it is very, very beneficial. Regardless, also that set up the radar tested for cut. So Keith, we do we do calibrate those, and I, I can tell you, if that if that thing's going at thirty five and somebody flies that hitting sixty or seventy, you can better believe we're going to stop that vehicle. It is a, a reckless driving endangerment, uh, but we do calibrate those things. That, so you're you're correct. Uh, but a lot of the vehicles do have the radar stuff as well. Um, we all caught up. Didn't miss anything. We're good. Um, what did, Oh, see, look at that. I was just getting ready to talk about some other stuff. Let's see what we got. I just moved to the area, and it's very encouraging to see a police department actually involving the community in this way. All departments really should be doing more police and community partnerships like this. So, you got to tell me, what area are you from? Uh, where, did, where did you move here to? Uh, and it's great to have you in, in I don't, I'm assuming you, when you say this area that you're in, you're in Newport News. Uh, Deanna, uh, I... I you know, when I when I talk to new officers that join the department, there's three things that I that I talk to them about. Uh, one is that I try to run the department like a family. That people that choose to come to work here, that they matter to me. That they're part of this family. We may not always agree, but these are the people that I interact with, that I that I that I see day to day. I want to know about how their family's doing, how their kids are doing, how their pets are doing, how their grandkids are doing, who's graduating college, who's playing baseball and football. How's it going at the dance recital or tennis? Um, so it's, I try to run it like a family because if people come here to work and they know that we care about each other, my hope is that we take that same feeling to our community, that we're family here in Newport News, right? We look out for each other and help each other. The second is we're going to have a strong community foundation. We're going to have a, be community policing. Uh, we work in our communities, our neighborhoods, our faith-based communities, uh, our businesses. But I have a strong, strong, strong passion for youth. Now, they drive me crazy at times. But I think the youth in Newport News are some of the most talented young people. Uh, I cannot be more impressed with them. And, and uh, anything you see us do, award ceremony, promotion ceremony, our 911 ceremony, national night out, and even on tomorrow, right, a graduation ceremony, I always have a youth involved. I have a sophomore tomorrow that's going to be one of the guest speakers at a police recruit graduation. That matters. My hope is to send a strong message to this community that youth matter to me. But it's also sending a message to this police department that youth matter to me. Uh, and then the last is that we are going to be the police department in this city. I'm not going to tolerate acts of violence. I'm not going to let individuals, regardless of race, gender, faith, um, zip code, uh, I'm not going to let people prey on other people. I don't want elderly people being afraid to go out on their front porch or kids uh, diving under their bed or in their bathtub when they hear gunfire and they think that that's okay. Um, every officer here in Newport News has a body-worn camera. Uh, we review that, uh, but we do a lot of stuff with our community, Boys and Girls Club, YMCA. I have citizens from the community help me with promotions. We have a use of force review board that is made up of five citizens and four officers. Uh, but those things are important. I think that's how we build trust and transparency. We have a great working relationship with our media, um, just trying to share information, not, not giving things away to, to hurt a case or an investigation, uh, but I think that's important that we, that we have a strong interaction with our, with our media and our community. Can you scroll up just a little bit past, Ms. Well, I want to make sure I didn't... I just... Oh, yeah, so yeah, so I do want to hear what Eric... Oh, she came to North Carolina. Okay. Uh, Miss Washington, before I close out, I, I, where did Miss Washington go? Before I close out, I think it's best shout out to the Feel Good. Uh, let me tell you, the Feel Good crew is amazing. They're a group of individuals that came together. We did three community days, one in the north, one in the central, one in the south. And these men, right, there's 10, 12, I don't know, they, they multiply. There's like 20 of them. And they are just grounded in faith. They come out and they cook hamburgers and hot dogs. Uh, men and women both, and they do so much for the community. In fact, they're going to do something with the police department here uh, next Wednesday night uh, as we work to kind of reward our evening and midnight officers. Uh, but that, that crew is amazing. And the stuff they do in the community, you know, some people talk it, they do it. Uh, just amazing group. Uh, I'm going to scroll back up. Keep going. For yes, I came here from North Carolina, and I... <laughs> I came here from North Carolina, have a degree in criminal justice. Very awesome to see it's actually happening. Wow. Well, it's great. Um, you know, I don't know if you're working in the criminal justice system or if you're looking for a place, but we certainly love to talk to you about something you could do with us here. 
Um, but welcome from North Carolina. Welcome to Newport News. Uh, Sean, sent you an email, sir. Hope you can help me out. Sean, I'll definitely take a look at it, see what we can do. Uh, the Little League World Series is on TV from one baseball guy to another. Have a great. Hey, Keith, let me tell you, before you go, man, we had a team from, from Newport News uh, head head out there. They didn't they didn't make it all the way to the series, but Warwick Little League, they did a great job. We got to give them some traveling money for me and the other assistant chiefs, not department funds, our own funds, right, just to support those young guys. Uh, Once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, uh, and I got to interact with them. Man, it was it was amazing. It was amazing to go out and see them. So, uh, yeah, no doubt, my friend. When I when I finish up here, that's where I'll be. Take care and be safe, Keith. Uh, Linda, Newport. Wow, Linda, thank you. Get me, get me choked up. Don't be throwing me curveballs, Linda, on on online. Uh, Miss Washington, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Now I'm caught up, right? I didn't miss anybody. I didn't skip over anybody. Um, yeah, so look at that. <laughs> I'm working out in the community. Uh, QMHP now, so I'm sure we will meet one day. Deanna, I look forward to it. Thank you very much. And again, welcome welcome to, to, to Newport News and in this area. And um, yeah, absolutely be great. Uh, Chesford had a girls softball team make it to the championship game last night, but lost to Oklahoma. Wow. Okay. That's amazing. That Let me tell you, fast pitch softball is no joke, man. <laughs> that is no joke. Uh, but that, that that's uh, that's one of my favorite sports, man. So that's great. Keith, you take care of yourself and please be safe. A um, couple of other things I think it's important uh, to share with the community. We're investing a lot of money in technology uh, to try to find some different ways to address issues. Um, uh, we're building a real-time crime center here. Uh, we're investing in uh, each officer now is going to be given a cell phone. There's so much new technology can be downloaded where we can take uh, uh, and talk into a phone and, and, and eventually populate a police report. Um, information, just all the all the different things. I think you know we live by these things, and as technology expands, uh, there, those are just ideas and, and things that we're investing in, um, and is paying paying off a lot a lot for us. Um, not only when we investigate crime scenes, how we recover evidence, process evidence. We have a, a Nyman machine that, for a better, not getting too technical, can do ballistic reports right here. That sometimes might take three months if we send to the state lab here. We can get it. 30 minutes to 24 hours. And that, that is a game changer, right? As we as we track down leads that come through, it's just, just amazing. I will say this, the best asset we have in this organization to address crime are our citizens. The second best asset we have are the men and women that do this job. Men and women, sworn and civilian. They're in uniform or work behind the scenes. Our crime analyst, our records division, our dispatchers who work 24 hours a day, um, our forensic technicians that process scenes and find evidence key pieces of evidence that we need for the case. You know, the detectives work around the clock, the officers. Uh, and that's just why I'm really excited about the graduation tomorrow. Uh, it's just going to be a really good event. And for 20 new people to take on the role and responsibility uh, in, in this uh, profession, it's just going to be uh, something we're really excited for. And then again, another 21 coming out just a couple months later. Uh, Chief, if we see suspicious things going on in our neighbor, how can we safely get the information to the police department? So there's a couple ways you can text the tip information. You can call 911 and they'll, you know, dispatcher ask you what you have. You can share that information. You can call the non-emergency number as well. But if you call 911, they will ask you, do you want to see an officer? And you can tell them, no, I don't, I don't need an officer to come to the house. I don't need one to call me back. Uh, just, I just want to report this is what I saw and we'll address it. Um, now sometimes when people call, well, I didn't see the police do this. I didn't see the police do that. Well, sometimes it may not be a marked vehicle that comes in that area. Uh, sometimes it may be something where we have a camera that we might be can move over to watch that particular area. Um, but if you want, hey, this is what I'm seeing. Can someone call and give me some feedback uh, or give me an update? We can certainly get your number and call you back, and we never have to interrupt you at home or draw any attention to you. So there's all kinds of ways to get that, get that information across. You can also send things through our Facebook page. Um, our crime line is, uh, uh, we monitor that as well, 24 hours a day. So you, you, uh, and it is anonymous and sometimes it, it even, uh, benefits, uh, we'll pay out rewards for that. So all those different ways, uh, and I think all those ways are laid out on the Facebook page. If you look at it a little bit, we can share that information. Uh, Kat, I'm late to the party, but just wanted to say thank you for all you do. Chief. Oh, wow. Well, thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. It means a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, thank you, Chief, for doing these lives. You're amazing. Can't wait to travel to Newport News to meet you all. Stay safe. 
Robin, well, look, we're here, right, 24 hours a day. So you come see us and, uh, you know, we'll get that ride-along program uh, fired back up as soon as we see some of these drops in COVID. Let me, let me talk about that for a minute. I know there's a lot of different things going on with vaccines and people feel one way or some people feel another. Um, I know individuals that have not got the vaccine at all and haven't gotten sick. I know people who have got the vaccine and have gotten sick. I know people who haven't got the vaccine and have lost their lives. I know of individuals that all of us, I would say, know friends or family who's been affected by this. And, and now the, uh, the variant, right? Um, there's a lot of unknowns and I'm certainly no expert. I just caution uh, all of us to be careful. Did you remember that distancing um, uh, with the vaccines and, 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 and the variants and to monitor, I worry a little bit about youth as we start getting back into school and to just, just be careful, right? Just take care of each other, just look out for each other and watch about the, uh, the, the information that comes through. And I try to try to keep up on that. Um, I have a couple officers who, who have gone through it and been sick. Um, I have a couple officers who are afraid of needles, uh, but have still still gone through. And and uh, but it's really just about. I think at the end of the day, we're just trying to find the best way. People much smarter than me trying to find the best way to address this virus and keep people safe and reduce the number of individuals that get sick or God forbid uh, lose their life. I think there's a. I think people researching are doing an amazing job. I think the nurses and the hospitals are doing an amazing job. Um, I know there's a lot of challenges. Doctors, uh, I just really appreciate the relationship that we have with uh, Centera here and, and, and Riverside Hospital, Mary Immaculate, that they just do an amazing job uh, of, of treating individuals. And I just really wanted to, uh, I don't know if a shout out is the right word, but I just wanted to say thank you for what, what they do. Uh, any of you that are in that that profession, man, it's it's just it's tough, and I really really appreciate you. Um, how are the police handling violence over COVID? People getting attacked over masks, etc. Sean, we really haven't had too many issues uh, with with violence surrounding surrounded that mandates or whatever. We haven't really had those issues. Uh, we're really able to have conversations, and some people feel very strong one way, and some feel very strong the other. And, and I think both have valid points. Uh, what we try to do is just if there are issues, just lower the temperature and keep people calm. Let everyone have a voice, have a conversation. Um, but for us, it's just really about being safe. Um, trying to get as much information out there as we can. I want to make sure that we protect the officers that come to work here and civilians that work in our different uh, areas and officers going out and interacting a lot. You know, our paramedics and fire department to respond to situations where people that may have may have some type of illness or uh, suffering from some, some uh, symptoms or whatever it might be. Uh, that we just protect ourselves, right? So it's it's those type of things and precautions that uh, I just want to continue to push, right? I just want to continue to push, but it's really about a focus on safety and and and, and taking care and looking out for e for each other. I think. So if I missed it, everything, everybody still looks good, right? Uh, I'm late to the party. Just want to say thank you. No, I got I got that one. I got yeah. I just yeah. Uh, thank you, Chief, for doing these. Lot here, yeah. Uh, tra I can't wait to traveling to traveling to Newport News to meet you all. Stay safe. I look forward look forward to that, Robin. Um, Judy, uh, Chief, Drew, really do appreciate your transparency. It's inspiring. Well, Judy, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, I, I don't know if you caught some of it earlier. Uh, I was a little late to the game about the technology stuff, uh, but the, the great people down here, uh, Julie and Sarah and Kelly and Maynard, to really push. Uh, the use of technology in, in Facebook Live and the different social media. They try to get me to do some of those talk tick video, what, tick, whatever. Uh, I got about, I ain't got no coordination like that. Um, so talking into this little ball, uh, it they talk to me about how it reaches so many people. And uh, the more we can do that and get information out and have interaction safely. Um, you know, I would go to a community meeting in years past and there'd be 20 or 30 people, and they'll bring me down here and show me, look, Chief, three days now, look at how many people have viewed or commented or asked questions. So I think it's a great way, a uh, tool. I'm still trying to get used to it. It's still a little awkward for me, but uh, I appreciate that. I think that that uh, when you talk about community policing being uh, open and transparent, uh, 
and accessible, I, I think, is, is an equation that all plays a role in that. So that means a lot. Thank you. You just made them look really good and me look like I should have listened. Uh, but thank you. What about the jail system? Are there changes coming? Um, uh, Sean, I'm not sure what you mean. Um, you know, we have a great sheriff here, Gabe Morgan. Have a great relationship. He's a mentor to me. Uh, we have some really good conversations. His his, his motto is one team, one fight. Um, I learned a lot from him. Um, he's seen a lot in his career. Um, I don't know that much surprises him. Uh, he knows how to adapt well. Uh, so, like I said, I, I know that he's on top of things there. But I don't want to comment on on some. I don't know some of the issues that he may be planning or he's doing. I don't want to. But but I, I will tell you, I have the utmost faith in, in, in Sheriff Morgan and what he's doing there with our, our uh, Sheriff's uh, Department here in Newport News. A great bunch of people, a great asset to work with. Um, TikTok, Cassie, did you not did you not listen? Did you not just hear what I said? I, I, I can't do that. And they tried to get me to do a dance at the uh, at the Saturday Community Day uh, with South with South in uh, not South uh, the, the Marshall Courts. So somebody went over and told the DJ there was a song when I when I was younger, Chris Cross and and uh, 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 jump jump right. So they played it, and I started to get embarrassed. And then so I I did go over and try a little bit. And I did. I walked over. I embarrassed myself, and I got out of the way. But uh, uh, yeah, they they teased me. But we I'm telling we had a good time, man. The kids were kids were showing me how to do it, and um, yeah, enough of that. <laughs> Remember the words she did? Oh, so Cameron, so my young uh, high school friend, you're going to lay it out for me? What the word? Let me just read them then. All right, Cameron. I don't know what any of them are, what the differences are, but I'm going to read them. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat. I'll quiz you soon. Don't they all do the same thing? Isn't it all like pictures and, and posts, right? It's all the same thing, Cameron. I don't get it. I don't get the difference. But... I understand people communicate different ways. Um, Cameron, do you know what this is? Do you know what a typewriter is, my friend? Did you ever work on one of those? How about a uh, word processor? Did you ever have something like that? How about a hard drive disk? Did you ever try one of those in, in, in a computer? Because that's how we got through high school. And co how about Cliff Notes? Did you ever try that? See, depending on what you talk about, it depends on what area you're from. But that's all right, my friend. Maybe you put that in your speech tomorrow. Chief's going to talk to us about Cliff Notes, word processor. Carbon copies where you got to write something and it's got three sheets to it and the pink one goes, you know what I'm saying? So I understand with the TikTok and Snapchat, I'm just saying some people my age, we did things a little different. It's okay, Cameron. Chalkboards, remember that? Dry, yeah. Um, Cameron's my friend. I got to give him a hard time. He, he is my buddy. Uh, we don't use the word can or TikTok is all about embarrassing yourself. Well, let me tell you, Cassie, if that's what it is. If that's what TikTok is, I could be the world's greatest TikTok champion because I don't need much help embarrassing myself. People point that out to me all the time around there. Uh, do you believe the connection between civilians and the police have improved since? I do. Um, I think one, Sean, that uh, it's a great question, by the way. Wow, it's a really good question. I think that one, uh, it's more people are more cognizant of it. Um, I think that the really good officers get it. Um, the best officers in any police department are the ones who know how to talk to people. Um, homicide detectives, narcotic detectives, the detective side investigations, the number one asset you look for is do you know how to, can you sit down at a table and talk to someone uh, to meet them where they are and, and sit down and, and lower the temperature and have a conversation? That's the best detectives. Uh, the best, they can get confessions to the truth of the matter. So I, I do believe so. I think that there's a more emphasis on it, a more focus on it. And for those that some are maybe not the best communicators, that they know, hey, we need that's something we need to work on. But I do believe uh, there are tre tremendous relationships with communities, and I and I have to say this in all honesty, Sean, I don't think that always those relationships get reported. I think that it runs across the TV screen where there's something bad that happens. But I can tell you, for every one thing bad that happens, there's a hundred good things. I get emails and phone calls every day about officers who are paying people's electric bills that are taking care of people that are invalid, that are going to someone's house and just changing a light bulb, that are uh, helping helping people to carry groceries out, buying kids bicycles and toys at Christmas. Um, I hear all those things. They're not always on the media, right? But if something happens in one part of the, cit uh, the city or the state or the country that shows things in a negative light, that's everywhere. But I can tell you, for every one, there's a hundred of good things that go on. But, but that is a really good question, my friend. I appreciate that. 
Is that something you write the Constitution with? Let's see, Cameron. See, it's okay. I know you guys put everything on a little. We actually used to have paper and pencils. Number two pencils. You probably don't even know what that is. Number two pencil. And a, you know what this is? That's a pencil sharpener. Once we go in and you'd sharpen it. None of this stuff where you push it and the lead comes out, right? I'll tell you what. I'll see you tomorrow, Cameron. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, floppy disk, spiral notebooks, and pencils. Cat, that's what I'm talking about, Cassie. Thank you. Uh, my friend Cameron. See, he teases me because I'm not all up on the on the on the phrases, but that's all right. It's okay. I'll see him tomorrow at graduation. We'll see. Um, Christina, Cameron's got jokes. I like this kid. Christina, he is a he is a piece of work. He's high maintenance too. Let me tell you, we took him out on the police boat, and he was like, "Hey, let's go for another trip." I'm like, let's just come on. You, you, yeah, enough. Off. Uh, he tried to steal away like Gilligan's Island. Like, hey, the Marine guy was like, hey, man, you got to go home. Uh, but no, he is a great kid. He, he, he is a great kid. Um, you know, we've got about five minutes left. I don't want to hold people too long. Um, uh -oh, Justin, a former correction officer for 14 years. I think, thank you for the outstanding work you're all doing. Uh, I'm from Matthews County now. My question is, how are you handling, handling, did I cut that off? Justin, I think the last couple, my question is, how are you handling, um, just add on to that for me. Uh, well, that's coming through from Justin. I just want to say this. I want to say thank you to um, individuals for tuning in tonight and just spend a little bit of time with me having some conversation. I enjoy uh, joking around a little bit and having a good time. I think we can have that, right? Some personality. Um, but there's some really, really good questions, and uh, that matters. Also, I want to thank the men and women who do this job day in and day out. Um, those that work around the clock, behind the scenes, uh, our dispatchers, our individuals in records, our crime analysts, uh, detectives that work through, uh, that sometimes don't even go home for days because they're following leads, trying to bring uh, resolve to families who've lost loved ones or have been in a traumatic event. From our crash investigators that come out, our forensic technicians that process crime scenes, all the things that they see that we suppress, but they're in our head. Um, the stuff that we do and the stuff that you all do in our community that nobody sees. The stuff that you invest with youth, coaching basketball leagues, baseball leagues, uh, getting off work and going to help baseball teams practice. Uh, for the Community Youth and Outreach Division that, that uh, goes and supports a, a local football team and cooks hamburgers and hot dogs for them and encourages them. For the individuals that are going to get backpacks this weekend and may never know where they came from. May never know who people took time to stuff them for them, but that is because we care about you. Um, the community, the youth, the officers, sworn and civilian both, to the people who clean this building and keep it straight, you matter to me, and I appreciate you. And I am honored and humbled to work for such great people. I know I'm just saying that into a round ball with a blue eye looking at me, but I would tell each and every one of you if you're here in front of me the same thing. I am, I am honored to, to work in this organization in this city. I, I thank the city manager all the time for allowing me the opportunity to work here. It, it, is, it is truly a blessing. Uh, trapper Keeper. Richie, oh my gosh. Yeah, the trifle, right? Oh my. And now, now, right now, I can tell you, Richie, if Cameron's still watching, he's Googling that, trying to figure out what it is. That's something me and you got, Rich. Not, trapper Keeper. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, Chief, can I get a shout out to Detective McCord, one of those officers who goes to Absolutely. Detective McCord is an outstanding young detective. He has a tremendous, oh, Derek, has a tremendous, tremendous future in this organization. Um, yep, absolutely. Uh, we keep you young and alive in exchange for your wisdom. Uh, Cameron, that's a fair trade-off. That's good. I'm glad we could go back and forth. Um, yeah, yeah, Justin, just email me directly, my friend. That would be great. So, again, I just want to uh, thank you for those that are able to watch this tonight or at some other some other time, uh, I understand you know life is hectic and all different things going on, um, but um, but yeah, those are those are all the, all those things are important in our time together. So I, I appreciate again um, all of you for, for just giving me the opportunity to spend a little bit of time with you this evening. Um, yeah, I'll forward we'll get you the address. Trapper Keeper, and haven't heard such a thing in my life yet. Or they're back. Cassie says they're back, and they're at Walmart. <laughs> Somebody's got to post one on 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 here tonight. Uh, Deborah, good evening, Chief Drew. We are back from California. Mom is still with us in nursing home. Wow, that is amazing. That is so good to hear. Um, Deborah, man, good Lord has blessed you. 
uh, in your family. That is that. Wow. That that is that is that's the best news of tonight. What you can't sign off any better than that, right? Um, please be safe. God bless you guys. Thank you, officers, for all that you do. Civilians, the commitment that you have. Dispatchers, all of you, please be safe. Robin, thanks a lot. Um, I'm going to get out of the way. Take care, and we'll do this again next month. Next month. Thank you all. <laughs> Two trapper keepers. <laughs>